Track meets are coming up. How are we going to prepare? We're going to talk about six things to help you hit big bombs in the track meet. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. In today's video, we are talking about six simple things you can do to improve and be prepared for big meat throws. Now, this is a thing that we've all been training for. It's been the off season and as the season comes around. So if you're watching this video and it's indoor season or you're watching this and we're opening for outdoor season, we're going to talk about six tips to help you have better meat competition and be prepared. So number one, what is the first thing that we're going to do is be prepared. That means get your bag ready. What are the things we want? We want shoes, ideally two pairs, slow pair and a fast pair. You've got different ring conditions. You've got elements, right? Rain and different things like that. So if it's a fast ring and it's rainy, that means it's going to be slick. You're going to want those slow shoes. If you're going somewhere and it's a dry, slow ring and you have fast shoes, great time to put that those fast shoes on. Or if you have great conditions, you can choose which one you want. And sometimes you're wearing a slow shoe on the left and a fast shoe on the right. A lot of, a lot of throwers do that. It's something I used to do. Now, we talk about shoes in our, our different uh, throwing shoes video. So check that out if you haven't. Um, so definitely that gets us to remember to bring socks. Some of the parts of the country, uh, Pacific Northwest, Northeast, Midwest, in different regions of South, you get a lot of rain out here in the Arizona and in Southern California, kind of the, you know, the Southwest, you don't see a ton of rain, but it's good to be able to be prepared for that. You never know what's going to happen and there will be those occasional rain days. So prepare and have an extra pair of socks. If you you know, have a rain delay and your feet got all wet and then you're standing around for an hour in wet socks, you have a fresh pair of socks that you can change into. Super, super easy, simple tip. That said too, bring a towel. It's always good to just be able to wipe your implements down and if it does get wet, you've got a towel where you can dry off your implements. Really important. Uh, make sure that you have chalk. Throwing chalk's great. You want to make sure that you have it for the shot or the disc. So whether it's hot and humid and your hands getting kind of sticky or, you know, kind of wet from just the humidity or it's hot and dry and you're going to be warming up and you get sweaty, you want that chalk on the hand. And if it gets rainy, chalk again, it's in all situations, it's going to help improve that grip. Now, what else goes in your bag? Make sure you got your uniform, make sure you got extra shorts, make sure you've got everything you need. If you're in a sunny environment, long sleeve shirt, sun hat, sunscreen, always make sure you have your water bottle prepared, all that kind of stuff. Be prepared. If you're in those cold environments, you know, sweatshirt, wind gear, all that extra stuff that you need, pack the bag. That's number one. So you are prepared. And even as I just talked on our Thrower X podcast, we talked with two really highly successful international coaches and they said the same thing. And one even said, yes, bring extra shoelaces. I was like, yeah, that's a great tip. So I'm passing that along to you and you'll see that interview. So be sure to check out our Thrower X interviews. Okay. So item number two is meat preparation. We want to basically be prepared for meets, right? So that means execute meet settings and meet situations in practice. Start your practices that multiple practice out. I usually like at least a week before the first meet, all the practices to go through the meet situation. We go through... Uh, where if we're in the discus, we're going to warm up and we're going to go a stand throw, a, a half turn, and then we're going to get right to fulls. And so we're going to practice being ready in four throws. If we can get an extra throw and you feel it's needed, you can take that extra throw. But oftentimes in meets, you get cut off. And it, especially if you're in an invitational, you're typically going to have uh, fewer warm ups. But if this way, you're always at least prepared by the four throw or four, you know, two times in the ring with two implements and that way you're ready to go. Uh, remember if you're at an invitational and a dual try invite, right? There's or a dual or try meet warm up and invitational warm up. Invitational, there could be five or six flights and you need to pay attention to what flight you're in and pay attention to the competition so you can time when you're gonna get your warm up and things like that started. And remember for the dual and the try meet warm ups, you're going to pay attention to when, you know, there's typically one or maybe two flights in a dual meet, so you don't have that since you're just gonna get in and warm up. Now, that said, warm up, Part of warming up is what I just mentioned. You have to pay attention in invitationals to what flight you're in 
and in duels and tries, like I said, you might have one flight or you might have two, but you still pay attention. If there's one flight, you're just going to warm up. Now, warm up, what should it include? Get your jogs in, you know, you want to, but you want to be doing A steps, B steps, skips, hops, karaoke's, you know, footwork movement, all that sort of stuff to get your hips going. I like to see, uh, we use our TCR drill bands. We love to see athletes doing face pulls and hamstring pull throughs and doing different things like that to get warmed up. So time your warm up so you're physically warmed up and then it's going to be time to throw. So what we practice and we've talked about about pre meets and getting going through that scenario of warming up. Now it's meet time. You got to do exactly what you've practiced multiple times. So you do what you've done several times the previous week or all throughout the season and it's you know, get in the ring, you hit your first two throws. It's a stand and a, you know, half turn and then two fulls. That's what I would suggest for the discus. The discus takes a little longer. You have the cage, the implements go further. And so the warm up time, you're not going to get as many rounds in. In the shot, we usually recommend a couple of stands, maybe a half turn, and then get to your full throws. What are your specific warm up things that you like? But get to your full throws as soon as you can. Get in that groove so that you're setting up those good technical patterns that are going to help you throw further. Now, remember, if you're somebody out there and you're not doing full throws, you should be. Be sure to check out our throwing chain reaction system. We'll show you how to get to a full throw in a matter of a couple of practices. So always work on your drills. Again, with the throwing chain reaction, we have 60 plus drills for, for basically each event. But that doesn't mean you go through 60 drills. It means through that we have a certain formula. Every athlete has a basically prescription of what pillar drills they need to work on. And when we get to meets, we're focusing on usually some walkthroughs that we're moving through the throw to work our different positions. And we're keying in on a couple of those key patterns that the athletes need to use. So if you don't know what that is, be sure to check the link. We have information on the throwing chain reaction and we have some quick class courses and different products that you guys want to check out. Now, last thing, if you've done those top five things, it's go time. Now you get into the meet, you're going to know what to set up. You're going to be consistent and you're going to hit those big throws. And that's the key. Look at the preparation. We're prepared across the board. That's how you're going to be able to have better performance. Otherwise, it's kind of a roll of the dice. If you warm up late, you forget something, you get all these things that potentially mess you up. But if you do the things that we're suggesting in this video, you will be ready to go confident. And that's when the big throws happen. Confidence is king. Okay, guys. So hopefully you like today's video. If you have anything, any comments, any questions, be sure to throw that down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. And if you'd like more information about how to improve your technique and find your individual formula and unlock your potential, check out the link below in the description for the throwing chain reaction system. Thanks so much guys. And we will see you on the next video.